prostrate yourself. You will give up the ghost on walking with God if you keep looking at those that seem to get it together a whole lot faster than you do. You have to be patient with yourself. You did not create yourself. You don't even understand half of what makes you tick. But God does. See, what I love about God is when he is correcting you, when he rebukes you, it's not always in your mind you may see him as an angry father that's getting really sick and tired of you by now haven't you gotten it yet what's taking you so long what are you retarded or something no that's not god's way of thinking listen to this i i've told this story before so okay when i was in beginning algebra in the ninth grade I had a math teacher named Mr. Yanofsky. He was a Jewish rabbi, and he was a phenomenal teacher. No offense, y'all, but New York teachers, in my opinion, got everybody else head over heels, because I'm telling you, I learned from the teachers in New York. When I came to California, I just kind of, you know, muddled my way through, because there was not much teaching going on. But these teachers put their soul into their teaching. Well, this teacher was so committed, so dedicated, that what he ended up doing was volunteering to meet us at 3.30 in the room. He would spend an hour to an hour and a half helping us through our homework and helping us understand the areas that we got a mental block in. There was one thing, I can't remember what it is now, I'm old, y'all, okay. But there was one thing I could not get over. I just, I loved math. I always enjoyed math. But I could not get past, I couldn't get over the hump. And that one barrier, that one obstacle, I couldn't get over the hurdle. And I couldn't, I couldn't grasp it no matter how hard I tried. And trust me, y'all, I was trying. He came over and helped me and we worked over this and worked over that. And he explained this and explained that and then had to come back the next day. He explained this and explained that. Had to come back the next day. Ha, yeah, mental block. And he just kept going over it and over it. And then one day, one day, miraculously, ding, the light turned on. All of a sudden, From that point on, I aced the class all the way to the end, all the way to the final. Why? Because someone had the patience when I didn't have the patience for myself. Someone had the patience to work with me to help me find conceptual ways or some type of way to understand whatever this thing was that I wasn't grasping. But when I got it, it was on and cracking. Now, that's the way God works with us. It doesn't matter if it takes you 10 days or 10 years. There are some things that will take you a very long time to grasp. And there are other things while you're walking with the Lord that you'll get immediately. And you'll get frustrated with yourself for the things that take a long time to get. But part of the time that it takes is part of the process of the inner workings of God that you will never understand because you're not God. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts. He's beyond us finding out. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Even if it does take 12 hours to get there, eventually you will. And that's why you have to hold on. That's why you have to hang in. That's why you have to wait on the Lord and renew your strength. Mount up with wings as eagles. Listen, listen, listen. What does an eagle do when he refreshes himself? He grooms his feathers. He sits at a very high point, right in the rays of the sun, 
and he grooms himself. I think he doesn't even eat. He just sits and grooms and grooms and grooms and he soaks in the rays of the sun. That's how he renews himself. You have to soak in God's presence at times. I've got playlists. Other people have playlists soaking in God's presence. Sit there, play the music, soak in his presence. You may not have anything to say. That's okay. God doesn't need you to run your mouth all the time. Sit in his presence. Father, I'm here. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. But I need you. Excuse me while I fight from getting emotional. I need you. I need you to do a work in me, Lord, but you start doing it now because I don't know how to get from point A to point B, but you know how to get me there. Give me the patience. I need a lot of healing. I need understanding and clarity. Help me, Lord. What do I do? And sit there. And sometimes all you can do is worship God. Bless his holy name. Thank him. You may not know what he's doing, but thank him for being faithful. Thank him, trusting that he'll get you there, that he will heal you, that he will make you whole, that he'll open up your understanding, that he will strengthen you on the inner man and deliver you from all of your fleshly hang-ups. See, when God calls us to his, to his bosom, he calls us just as we are. When he calls you, he calls you because he knows you are toe up from the flow up. Got to use that street expression. He knows it. He knows how torn up you are. He knows how messed up you are. And that's what gives him joy, knowing all that he's going to do in you to get rid of the rifts and the cracks and the holes and the dents and the dings and the, and the blemishes and the scars and the dirt and the filth and the stench. He takes more pleasure than you do in cleaning up your mess. Okay. Oh, sorry, you guys. This is really getting to me. Excuse me. Now, there are people, let me share this with you. There are people who would not have a fulfilling life. I'm making a point. It's another analogy. Who would not have a fulfilling life if there were not other people in the world who were disorganized and messy. Why I say that? There are people who take extreme joy and pleasure in bringing that which is chaotic into order, organizing, planning out, strategically putting things in their place and having a place for everything, categorizing, itemizing. They love doing all that. While the messy person, it's like it's overwhelming. Woo! It's like, no, 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 no. But that person gets a joy out of it. So when they go in your house or they go through your paperwork in your office, while you're feeling embarrassed, they're feeling exhilarated because they're rolling up their sleeves and they're like, oh, yes, I'm going to enjoy doing this. They're not turned off by it. They're turned on because that's what they do. That's what they're wired to do. Bring things in order. How much more, God? How much more is God wired to fill the longings of your soul? To fill up the cracks and the holes of your soul? To refurbish you? To heal you on the inner man? To deliver you from the chains that bind? How much more is God that much more excited to do it for you and me? Think about it. 
That's what he's wired to do. You don't get embarrassed if you sin. You don't get embarrassed if you mess up. Because that's another work God's going to do in you. You take it to God. You take your failures to God. You take your sins to God. You don't hide from him. When you're at your worst, when you're at your weakest, I'm telling you from experience, that's when you go to him that much more. Because that's what he wants you to do. He's wired to rebuild you. He's wired to rewire you. He's wired to help you renew your strength. To help you mount up on wings as eagles. To run and not be weary. To walk and not faint. God is there to do all of that for you. Whatever you do, you cannot give up on yourself. You don't have the right. What right do you have to give up on yourself? You don't have that right. Who do you think you are? You're not your own. You were bought with a price. And the blood of Jesus does not come cheap. So you keep your little imperfect self in God's hands. That's what you do. When you don't know what else to do and you can't even make a stand, just stand with what you got left. When you've done all to stand, stand. Just be there. Just be there, all muddled up in your mess. Just be there. What does a baby do? What does a baby do when he's in the cradle and, his, and he messes in his diaper? He cries, wow, wow, wow. He's making a fuss because he doesn't like the way it feels or the way it smells. But he's there. He's in it. What does he do? He's there. He just stays there now, doesn't he? And he calls the only way he can on mommy or daddy to come and change that nasty diaper. The baby made the mess, why didn't the baby change it? Because he can't. Because he cannot do so on his own. Neither can you. Neither can I. We have to come running to our Father, which art in heaven, and ask him to change our nasty diapers. Quit trying to be so grown. Come as a child. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will raise you up. Don't think you got to have it so together. It's those that know they don't have it together that get the most help from God. What I pray for you is that God will reveal supernaturally his love for you. That God will reveal his nature as a father, as a parent, as a counselor, as your healer, as your physician, as your mentor, as your friend. God is not a can of rage waiting to spray you to death and kick you to hell at the first sign of trouble. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. 